Well, it goes down as a win in the, the record book, and I guess that's all that really matters, right? Well, well, we can answer that better maybe in a week or two, uh, but it's certainly a lot of concern. But to come out of there with a win, considering everything that went wrong and a lot went wrong, uh, yeah, you, you certainly take the W. Yeah, and they did. The Eagles win 25-20, beat the Patriots in New England. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. Rube, let's talk about it a little bit because uh, it, it's a weird game uh, from a coverage standpoint because they win, but I don't think anyone leaves this game. Like, if you're an Eagles fan and you watch that, you're going, yeah, I'm, I'm happy they won, but a lot to clean up. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I mean, just kind of watching the postgame show, people might have thought if they tuned in late that they lost. And it didn't feel like they lost because – they won and they, they did what they had to, but it certainly raises a lot of questions, a lot of issues and, you know, makes the, you know, this is supposedly the easy part of the schedule. So it makes the next few weeks uh, really more interesting to me, at least because now we can see how they respond to all the, all the problems that we saw today. And, and there were a lot really on both sides of the ball. I would say mainly an offense, but on both sides of the ball, um, certainly issues, uh, not the product that you expect to see from a team that just went to the Super Bowl. But again, you know, we've, we talked about this. It's really hard. First of all, it's really hard to win an opener because weird things always happen. And you saw upsets around. I was watching that Browns Bengals game before we started. And, you know, that's, I mean, there's always surprises. Washington didn't take the lead over the cards who were maybe one of the worst teams ever assembled until like two minutes left. So you always see weird things, and we certainly saw some unusual things, not the team, uh, not the performances that anybody expected from the Eagles today. Yeah, a little bit of a rainy day. Uh, I think that played a factor early in this game, especially the Eagles went really run heavy uh, on that first drive. And I thought like that first drive, it looked pretty good. And I thought, okay, this is going to be – an easy win, and then they, they get the, the turnovers on defense and they get that pick six from Slay, and you think, all right, they're off to the races here. It's 16 nothing. This is going to be over at halftime, uh, and then it wasn't, and, and that's a little troubling that they they were up so big and they weren't able to kind of close them out, and, and, I mean, heck, right there at the end, the Patriots had a chance to, to drive for the win. Yeah, the Eagles have only lost two games in franchise history that they led by 16 or more points at the end of the first quarter, and they're both really notable games. <laughs> this day fixes the lights. Uh, Sorry. The last time they lost a game that they trailed uh, by 16 at the end of the first quarter was the the opener in 99, Andy Reid's first game, uh, when they lost 25-24. I think they blew like a 17 nothing lead. And the other one was in, in Oakland in 95, and it was significant because it was Randall Cunningham's last game, his last start as an Eagle. Uh, Eagles were up 17 nothing and lost 48-17. And Rodney Pete came in, and uh, Randall got benched, and yeah, and, uh, and then the Eagles made their run to the playoffs. But um, it's rare. I mean, it doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. It can't happen. And it almost happened. It almost happened. All right, let's – you want to break down some of the offensive struggles yeah. in this game a little bit. There were some good moments offensively, uh, but overall, I think you leave this game thinking that is not the offense we expected to see from the Eagles. And you give Bill Belichick credit. They had a good game plan. Uh, talking to a few players after the game, they said they, they were throwing some stuff at them that they didn't really anticipate, which is, you know, that's what Bill Belichick does so well. But, I mean, the final offensive numbers just – yeah, I mean, 251 total net yards. They were four for 13 on third down. Ended up with 17 first downs, but they got a lot of them early when they were running the football. Uh, Jalen Hurts, 22 for 33. I'm going to interrupt you and give you a, a, a little nugget based on what you just said. 17 first downs, right? Yeah. Eight of them on the first two drives, nine of them on the next 11 drives. Yeah, and it felt like that. That that early drive, you thought, it's raining. They're doing what they need to do. Uh, and then in the second half, I thought, okay, now they're going to start breaking out offensively a little bit. Uh, and it never really got there. Yeah, I'm sitting there. They're up 16 nothing. I'm sitting there, and I'm writing my 10 observations. I'm like, oh, you know, they're going to win 35-8. to eight. You know, this will be easy. My obs will be done middle of the second quarter. And then it's just whenever I do that, this happens. Um 
Yeah, it just kind of got away from them at the end of that second quarter. Then some defensive breakdowns. The offense went five straight three and outs. I believe they netted two yards on on their five second quarter drives. The second quarter was just a disaster. I mean, they had five. And you could tell how bad it was because they had those four three and outs. They got the ball back with twenty five seconds and two timeouts, and they went into they were happy to go into halftime. Yeah, that was that was, and really considering. The way the offense was going, I, I was almost okay with it because I was afraid they were going to do something to, to, you know, give the Patriots the ball back. I, I you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I probably ultimately with this offense and that team and that quarterback, maybe you should be more aggressive there. Kind of reminded me of the uh, the Vikings deal in the super in in in, uh, in the Randall season, the um, Dennis Green deal, uh, but uh, they had three timeouts and two minutes left. But uh, yeah, it was they, the the offense just looked out of sync, and um, you know, opened the th- second half a little better, but it just never really, never really saw the offense that we expected. There was a play here, a play there. AJ made some nice catches on that big field goal drive, which ended up being a huge drive. Um, Jalen finally aired it out a little bit. Uh, he didn't have a completion over fifteen yards until the fourth quarter, and. And uh, that one, I think the twenty-three or twenty-three yarder to AJ after he bobbled the forty-eight yarder out of bounds, and it was it was reviewed and overturned. Um, but yeah, just nobody. I I didn't like the lack of variety in the offense. It was all gain. Well, you know, Penny was was down. Swift didn't have a role, which was weird. Like we made such a big deal all summer about all these backs. And then none of them played except Gainwell. And the, the whole, to me, the whole idea of having all these backs is keeping the defense off balance. Are they going to get Swift? Are they going to get Gainwell? Are they going to get Penny? Are they going to get Scott? And it was just all Gainwell. I, I didn't get that. And um, these are all things, you know, Goddard wasn't targeted till I think the end of the fourth quarter and didn't have a catch. It was just weird. They were out of sync. I thought Brian Johnson was out of sync. I think he's a good coach, uh, but um, he's got a ways to go because. You know, the thing about Shane Steichen was when when Jalen was struggling, Shane was really good at getting him into a rhythm and finding, you know, f- dialing up things that, you know, that are were like low risk, high reward, short passing game, um, getting the ball to Goddard, to the backs, just finding ways to get him into a rhythm. And then you would see him take off from there. And that just never really happened t- t- uh, tonight. So a lot of work to do. Uh, Jalen just kind of seemed – um, I don't know. Just not. He just seemed off. I don't. I don't know another way to put it. He just seemed off. It wasn't awful. Um, didn't have any any interceptions. Had the fumble. Um, but it was just a weird game offensively. And um, maybe our expectations of Brian Johnson were were too high for his first game. And like you said, he's going up against one of the greatest defensive minds ever. And that's that's a lot to ask. But um, they got a lot to clean up on that side of the ball. They do. And look, I, I don't think it was all on Brian Johnson. I thought there were just some – I didn't think the offensive line played particularly well. I thought Jalen had some pressure on his face. The fumble just can't happen. I mean, yeah. that was a, a crucial moment. The defense ended up picking up the team at that point. But if you're Jalen, I mean, it was a good play on defense, but you can't fumble the ball there. Uh, there were some good moments for Jalen, though. I mean, like the, the Devontae Smith ball was a beautiful pass – that deep ball to AJ that got overturned was perfect. A great ball, yeah, and that that was. I was still a little surprised they overturned that. Um, I thought he clearly went out of bounds without control. Um, it's when you slow it down that much. I, I said it. I said it when it was live. I I said to the guys in the room. I said that's not a catch. I I was pretty confident just seeing it in full speed. But you know, yeah, either yeah. It could go either way. I guess. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was enough to overturn it because you're allowed to shift the ball. Yeah, but he didn't shift. He lost possession of it. Okay. Like Corey Clement was shifting it. He never lost it in the back of the end zone in in 17 in the Super Bowl, obviously. Was that this? Which game was that? <laughs> well, just, just to clarify. Were they playing that one? They played the same team. Oh. Um, in, in Minneapolis, yeah. So he, you know, he shifted it from one hand to the other, but he never, he never lost control of it. He had possession of the ball the whole – process and i didn't think aj did i was a hell of a throw though you're right yeah it was a good throw so there was some good stuff there was um 
Quez had a, a nice play across the field. Sure he got he got involved a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're right though. They were just never in sync. This is not the offense you expected. I mean, this is not the offense we saw all summer. I think the rain played a factor early on, but there's no reason for it in the second half. I mean, in the second half, things it dried up out here. It wasn't raining anymore. Football wasn't wet. Uh, they just have to be better. They know that. Uh, yeah, Goddard not getting a target until the fourth quarter is tough. They were doing some things to take him away, but that should never happen. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and the running back thing, and and Nick, you know, Nick addressed it. He said, I mean, he said he thought Brian Johnson did an incredible job, and then a second later, he said uh, DeAndre Swift has to have more than two touches, and it really two inconsequential touches. He had one carry, which was in the fourth quarter. Really late. It was for three yards, and then he had one, one catch for no yards. He also he had was, a drop. He did have a drop. Yeah, he had a drop. Devonte had a drop as well. So there's just a lot of, a lot of weird stuff going on. Um, Jalen looked rushed to me sometimes, and I, you know, I thought he was under some pressure at times. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, there's, there really wasn't a lot on offense. That you, I mean, I thought Gainwell did some nice things, but um, I just think he's more of a – I think he's more of a change of pace – not a change of pace guy because I'm fine with him starting, but I think Gainwell works better if it's off another back. Like if Swift comes in and gets a couple of series, gets six carries, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there's just – I mean, that's that's the whole idea of this. I don't think any of them are good enough by themselves to – to be a lead back, but as a group, I think they can be really dangerous. And what did you make that. of of Penny being down? I'm surprised. Uh, well, it's weird because last year I, they clearly didn't need to to have four running backs up, and they had three up all year. Trey Sermon, for I mean, for the most part, was inactive all year. Uh, they go with three again, and and he knew Boston was probably going to be up because he's the kick returner. Uh, where do you think it leaves Penny? I mean, are we going to see him? Are they going to keep him on ice until they need him? It's a great question. Uh, my initial thought was they're going to keep him healthy to the playoffs and then just spring him on everybody. Um, I don't know. Um, kickoffs aren't really, you know, enough of a important play anymore for me to think. And look, I like Boston, and Boston's you know done some nice things offensively in, in his career. But I mean, you have a you have a talent like Penny. I'm just looking to see if. If um, how many kickoff returns the Eagles had today? And uh, I don't know. I'm missing where we have kickoff returns. Quez had the one for 11 yards, and there were three touchbacks. So Boston didn't even kick it. You know, return any kicks. Oh, well, Quez, was that was the, the that was the line play. drive. Yeah. That the, that what was that? That was a stupid play. It was like they didn't know if they were going to onside or kick it deep, so they kind of did it in between, and the Eagles got decent field position out of it. But anyway, uh. I'd rather have Penny up than Boston, and I, I'd, I'd like to see what he's all about. I think um, Boston, it, you know, if somebody's hurt, Boston's a fine player. Um, but, I mean, Rashad Penny is the highest rushing average in NFL history. Why'd you bring him here? You know, why'd you bring him here if he's not going to play? I don't get it. Yeah, I think a lot of it comes down to trust, and I think that's why Gainwell played so much. The coaching staff trusts the guys that have been with them, and – they trust them in, you know, third down situations where they have to pass protect, right or wrong. I mean, I think that's probably why it skewed so heavily Gainwell this game. Yeah, it could be. Um, I, I, at some point, I'd like to see Penny, and maybe I mean, Penny didn't have a fumbling problem. He, I don't remember him fumbling at all in training camp. Do you? No, uh, I don't remember any. Um, I thought he was pretty sure-handed, and I thought he looked pretty explosive and elusive. Uh, looked great when he got into the open field. Um, maybe the rain, they just thought Gainwell. I, I don't know. I just don't know. But it'll be interesting to see uh, how it goes moving forward and what, what that running back rotation looks like Thursday and, and then, you know, a week from Monday. Yeah. I mean, with you're a little limited with the roster and how many players you can keep active. So I think it is tough to keep four running backs up, but I kind of thought they were going to. I did too. Um. Yeah, I'll have to look at the snap counts uh, when we get them. I mean, uh, Catavia Street was up. Derek Barnett was up. I don't know. I, I think they could, if they if they really wanted Penny active, they could find a spot for him. 
Yeah. Maybe. Even if it's just for Boston. Even if it's a one on you know, one to one switch. And Kenny has returned kicks. I mean, he did it in college. He hasn't done it in a long time, but it's it's really a play that doesn't exist. Yeah, it's a play. It, that's what I was that's what I meant by it. it's like it's not worth the roster spot to have Boston on the game day active just to return kicks. Because I'm kind of with you on that. It's not really a, a, a significant play anymore. And I think the difference between putting Quez back there or, or putting Penny back there or anybody, I mean, Boston's pretty good. He gave his team a lift last year late in the season with his kick returns. He has some big ones, but I don't know if he'll have those opportunities anymore the way the rules are. And I think Penny can give you more on offense. You might be right. Uh, we saw some 21 personnel in this game. We saw a little bit of it in training camp, and I was wondering if that was just something they were working on in training camp. Uh, I saw maybe two or three plays of 21, which is significant. They barely did it at all last year. Uh, two running backs on the field. Two um, running backs, one tight end. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it didn't uh, – I didn't see it really make a difference. I didn't, I didn't see any big plays out of it. Well, there weren't any big plays at all. So <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It didn't have a play longer than – 15 yards until the fourth quarter, and then A.J. had the 23-yard catch. A.J. had some big catches on that drive. That was a big drive. Yeah. Um, they came out, and they ran a bunch of pistol stuff in this game. They barely were in pistol all training camp. It was kind yeah. of strange. Yeah. Um, some weird play calling. Like, like, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, going for it on fourth down after you're basically like – conceded first, second, and third down. I just don't like, I don't get that. Like if you're gonna go for a fourth down, be a little more aggressive on on the earlier downs. It, I didn't hear what what was Nick's explanation on that? Did you guys hear that? No. I, I we were it, it played and I I was kind of working on my 10 ob so I <laughs> I was spacing out at that point. But um yeah I don't know. He I, I, he addressed it but there was no like clear reason. I think what he said was what you guys think isn't aggressive uh, we might think is aggressive. Sometimes running the ball is aggressive. So I think that's what he said. But I don't I think throwing the ball more than 10 yards is aggressive. Running it for two yards isn't aggressive. But what do I know? Uh, he was I mean, he he spent a lot of his press. Are you in there at all? No, um, I that's so for people who don't know, like uh, there the press conferences go on while the locker room is open. And I don't really have a choice on the road. I have a camera with me, so I'm gathering sound for our right. network and for post games. So I, I have to be in the locker room. And thanks for that, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he he uh, he spent a lot of the time, you know, I don't say covering up for Brian Johnson, but kind of defending him. Um, and and I agree, it wasn't all on him. But I don't think he called a good game. I don't think he was able to get the offense into a rhythm at all. So a lot of what Nick was talking about was kind of it's on me <laughs> you mean you mean to call an electrician for you no so the, i'm in one of these booths and people who are listening just listening have no idea what's happening That's i'm in true. one of these booths and uh like it when there's no motion the lights turn off oh yeah so and it, it, it seems like it happens quite a bit they're really saving energy here at gillette stadium every like five minutes i gotta like wave my arms to try to get the lights back maybe if you just kind of like run in place like during the whole podcast <laughs> it'll stay on i need like a like a like a ball or something to throw up <laughs> you don't have one with you i don't i have I water was, bottles i just tell you to keep a ball in your <laughs> in your bag uh, we both Do we have anything else on offense that we need to talk about i don't think so no i think we covered it uh, we should mention some of the injuries in this game before we get too far. Uh, Fletcher Cox left early. <laughs> Talked to him after the game. He didn't really want to say anything about it. It looked like he might have walked down to get a uh, an X-ray, but he talked in the locker room, which is probably a good sign. He made some big plays late in that game. He was great on that one drive. Yeah. He looked like prime Fletcher. He really did. He back-to-back plays. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought he was terrific. Yeah. Uh, shame to see him get – and he's. we've talked about him before, how tough he is. He doesn't – Miss games, he doesn't miss time. So if there's a possibility of him playing on Thursday, he's going to be out there. Uh, Nicobe Dean left with a foot injury. Uh, I did not see him after the game, but I, I heard that he was in a boot, a walking boot, which uh, um, you never know. I mean, that, that sometimes that can just be a precautionary thing, but uh, not a position where they have a ton of depth. 
Um, well, I thought Christian Ellis played really well. Uh, it's the most he's ever played. Um, they went after him, and you know it wasn't a perfect uh, performance in any means. But it's the first time he's really played uh, defense in his career, other than uh, mop up duty, and uh, it was up and down. But he did some good things. Excuse me, he did some good things. Yeah, uh, and the other injury, James Bradbury left early. We never got an update on that. Um, don't want to speculate, but he missed the end of the game. We'll, we'll find out his status, but that's not another spot where, you know, they're not super deep. You have Josh Joe out there and they, they actually tested Josh Joe, but he held up on that. He made a nice play on that, that his coverage on that um, fourth down. He was right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if, if that would have been a completion if he wasn't there, but it was good tight coverage. And that was a huge play. I mean, that's, and he's another one. I think he played 12 snaps last year. He ba- yeah. barely played any defense last year. So he comes in cold. And and I thought made a nice play there on the fourth down, clinched the game. But Ringo was up, uh, Ricks was down, which we kind of expected. Um, but Goodrich yeah. was down too. Goodrich was down too. Yeah. So uh, I don't know who the backup nickel would have been. Maybe that's why they were working Bradbury so much there that they could slide him to nickel if uh, Vivante ever had to leave. It would have to be because they didn't so have many any options. Corners. Yeah. Yeah. Job never, never. I've never seen Job take reps in the slot. No, he's an outside corner, so it would have had to have been Bradbury. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, let's take a break, and we'll come back on the other side uh, with some defense. Catch all the sports action and more at Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Whether it's the money line or the pass line, there's something for everyone in a great sports book. Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Philly loves a winner. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred GAMBLER. that thrills you a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps at nissan we've got everything from turbocharged suvs to 100 percent electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local nissan store and nissanusa.com today all right let's talk defense a little bit can we start with jalen carter because that's the most fun thing to me sure is let's do it he looked great yeah he really did I mean, he kind of reminds you of a, I don't know, it's not fair uh, to say young Jerome Brown, um, but just his, his personality, just the way he, he he moves, his athleticism, his size. Uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's going to be a problem. Uh, I love the effort. I love the energy. I love just how, how involved he is on so many plays and uh, the pressure he was getting, I mean, he was in he was in uh, Mac Jones' face like three times in the first few drives, uh, just making his presence. Now, this is his first NFL game, and I don't know what they gave him stat-wise, but uh, I was really impressed. He had six pressures on 32 pass rush snaps. Did he really? Yeah, and then he had, he had that cleanup sack at the end, which was a huge moment yeah. for him to get on the board uh, first time in his career. And it was a it was a it was a play they had to have, and he was you know Mac Jones stepped up in the pocket. They brought Christian Ellis on a blitz on that down, and uh, Mac felt it, pushed up in the pocket, and and Carter was there to clean him up. They needed that. It was a big play. Yeah, he's um, I mean, he's even ahead of where I thought he'd be. You know, for for a guy kid playing his first game, he's twenty two years old. Um, he talked about wanting to be the defensive rookie of the year, and 16 more games like this, and he'll have it locked up. Yeah, I think if he finishes with 17 sacks, he'll probably uh, take <laughs> and, uh defensive rookie of the year. And um, let me do some quick math. Um, 102 hurries. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a record. Uh, so uh, it was impressive. And Jordan Davis, uh, I, you know, he I thought he played really well as well. Um, all the, all the Jordan Davis last. forced fumble. For him yeah. to recognize the screen – to get back in coverage, beat his man, and then form tackle and punch the ball out. Yeah, it was a great he, play. He shouldn't be able to do that at yeah. his size. Yeah, it was a great tackle, and it was funny to hear um, Jalen Carter talk about it. And he was like, "I've seen him make that tackle. His form is perfect." And yeah. and uh, yeah, it was it, it was the kind of play I don't think we see from him last year. You know? And uh, I think he's a guy that needs positive things to happen. I think you know he's. He, he can get down on himself sometimes, so it's it's good for him to get started with a, a really positive game. He, he's listed with six tackles, half a sack, tackle for loss. His uh, first uh, half sack. 
yeah, his first half sack. Um, obviously the forced fumble and a and a quarterback hit. So I mean that's that's filling up the box score. Uh, those two Georgia kids are, um, they, and they really feed off each other. You know, we talked about it a lot over the really since the spring, but it's more than just a theoretical like this will make a good story. How these two Georgia guys are best friends and they play well together. They really do, and um, yeah, they're they're fun to watch. It was pretty cool. After I don't know if you guys uh, ran this on air, but I was talking to Fletcher about his first sack and if he remembers his first career sack. He's like, yeah. Of course I do. It was first game against Cleveland Browns. Got Brandon Whedon. Like, that was that game where Brandon Whedon threw four interceptions. <laughs> two by two were Kirk Coleman, and two were DRC. Why do you know that? I know things, Dave. Yeah, but if I ask you what happened in you know a game last year, you'd have no idea. I don't have any idea what happened tonight, <laughs> but I remember that game because I think Vic and Whedon both threw four interceptions. It was like the only game in NFL history with both starting quarterbacks on opening day threw four picks, hmm. and the Eagles won. But it was uh, yeah, it was it was a tough game. But anyway, um, yeah, but it's just cool because it's, it's a moment yeah. you know uh, yeah. Jalen Carter's going to remember for the rest of his life. And it it wasn't just that he got his first sack; it's that he got it in the fourth quarter of a one score game when his team absolutely needed it. Yeah, and I think that's one thing this defense did last year. I mean, you got 70 sacks, you're getting them all the time. But when when there were games where they weren't getting great pressure early, they would get it late. And I think part of it was they kind of forced Mac Jones into, you know, known pass, and, and that's when they can really tee off. Um, but it, it was good to see. I thought Reddick had some good pressures late. Um, the, the one play where I think it was a fourth down where Fletch and I think it was Fletch and Reddick kind of converge it wasn't a sack but they kind of forced them to make a, a ridiculous throw I had no chance um, so they got a lot of pressure late in the game and that was good to see yeah absolutely uh not all great on defense yeah. and uh you know one of the the fears we talked about with this defense was the middle of the field uh the safeties and linebackers and I, I thought we saw some of those fears realized in this game yeah, I think that's fair. We kind of knew they were going to go after, you know, the safeties and the and the linebackers, um, and they did. And you know, and then obviously when Bradbury wasn't in there, went after Job. That was just the very end. But um, they got some work to do. And you know, I thought Reed Reed played well for the most part, but there were a couple he'd want to have back. Um, Justin Evans, there was a few he'd want to have back. Um, yeah, Nicobe. Missed a couple tackles. I mean, it, it was yeah. Zach yeah, Cunningham it, definitely a little lost at times. Bad yeah. angles. Yeah, uh, it's concerning because you know we saw some good play from those guys here and there. I thought Justin Evans didn't look very good. No, he didn't. Uh, you know, it, and it, it, it shouldn't be that surprising. It was like day thirteen of training camp, and all of a sudden he's got first team reps, and you're going, "Well, why?" Yeah. It was um, it was kind of like the lesser of four evils, or you know, he was yeah. he was the best out of, and it's nothing against Sidney Jones because I think he's going to be a good player, but you know, I don't think Sydney he's Brown. ready. What did I say? Sidney Jones. Did I say Sidney Jones again? Yeah. See, because he didn't play in that 2012 game in Cleveland. <laughs> uh, Sidney Brown, I think, is going to be a good player, but I, they just don't think he's ready yet. He probably isn't, but there might come a time where, uh, after what I saw today, I. I Why try not? it. Yeah. I And it was – so they were rotating a little bit too. It was like Justin Evans. Uh, it was more Justin Evans than Edmonds. Right. Uh, but we – and when Reed left for a few plays, it was both of them out there, which is a nightmare when you have Edmonds and Evans on the field. It's, it's a Evans. nightmare, not just their name, but their play. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, we saw Christian Ellis rotate in a little bit um, for Zach Cunningham, mostly Cunningham though, out there with N'Kobe. When N'Kobe left uh, – I forget who told us this. It was either Christian Ellis or Reed Blankenship getting the the calls. Interesting. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be shocked if Christian Ellis is a starter before too long. It might not be a bad idea. Maybe in four days. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, what was I the most concerning thing on defense? Because there were good things, but what, what concerned you the most? I would say just what we're saying, just the breakdowns in coverage in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought that was because look, Mac Jones is he's he's an he's okay, but 
yeah, the combination of not a lot of pressure early. He was getting rid of the ball quick, and there was just guys running open. And, you know, early on, I mean, he looked kind of over in over his head. I mean, he was struggling that first quarter. Um, they were pressuring him. Their coverage was great. And then it's just kind of – he just – he got some momentum. Uh, he got some confidence, and he started finding guys. And those two touchdown drives back-to-back started kind of wondering what was going to happen here. Um you know, and then he put up another another touchdown in the in the second half. But for the most part, I mean, they were actually better, you know, with with Ellis in there. I think. Yeah, I, I think so. That might be true. Yeah, um, it's a spot. Where, I mean, they don't have depth, so I mean, Nicholas Morrow might have to play on Thursday night, or yeah. might have to at least be elevated. And uh, then then you're in a situation where <laughs> you need him up, but you also need your punter and your punt returner. Yeah, and we'll see what happens with these injuries. Hopefully, none of them are serious enough where someone has to go on IR and make that decision easier. Mm-hmm. And obviously, it's four games at this point. But um, yeah, they've and this is look. This is the problem with having a punter and a punt returner who are on your practice squad. It really, it you know, you can elevate them for two more weeks, but it takes away the reason that you elevate players in the first place because you need them yeah. at a position because of an injury. So. Uh, there's going to be some tricky roster management. Uh, it, you know, if any of these injuries are serious, um, Thursday night we're going to have to. There's going to be some roster moves, and you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe you know they might have to release Mario Goodrich. I, I don't know. Um, get him on a practice squad, and then you know, activate Nick, Nicholas Morrow, something like that. Yeah, possibly. Uh, Slay had that big pick six. Um, it. It, it it didn't feel like it was seventy yards. It didn't. And, yeah. But you look down, you're like, wait, he caught that at the thirty. Yeah. Uh, he's fast, man. And Millen Williams, by the way, running with him. I know I that. Millen had a little head start, but he kept up with him. Yeah. It was such a huge play, and the, it's he's the oldest player in Eagles history with an interception return of seventy yards or more. And you know what's interesting? It's the longest interception return by an Eagle since Malcolm had that 99-yarder off Brady in the yeah. same stadium. Interesting. It's also the longest of Slay's career. Yeah. And it's only his third pick six, which surprised me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got one in the postseason, but um, for a guy, five-time pro bowler, kind of thought he'd have you know five or six by now. And but. he's so good when the ball is in his hands because he's, he's, he's still fast, by the way. There yeah. was that one play where he got beat in coverage, and he, yeah. got, he just made up Brown. Yeah, that was did. amazing. He should have had another pick, probably. I don't know what he said, but there was another one I thought he had his hands on. He could have caught. They actually, Josh Sweat could have had the one. I was talking to Sweat about that one. He said it was Mac Jones' fault. He, he, he's <laughs> like, yeah, I had my hand up. He was supposed to throw it in my hand. He threw it in my face. I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> uh, I thought there was one Maddox maybe could have had, but that would have been a, that would have been a really tough one. They they dropped a few. Um, but it was good to see him get a couple turnovers. Obviously, the forced fumble was huge. Two takeaways is, I mean, that really saved the game for him. That really did. Yeah. Jake Elliott and the takeaways. Um, I did think the the run defense was good. I thought that was something that, you know, Ramondre Stevenson's a good – he's a good back, and Zeke has certainly had his, his moments. I don't think he's got much left. Uh, but you knew they wanted to run the ball. Um, Stevenson ended up 12 for 25. Um, Zeke was 7 for 29. So – um, they averaged three and a half yards a pop, seventy six yards. So it's real. That was really good. I thought they were. Um, and look, as bad as they were against the run last year, it was a good start. Yeah, I, that's hard to disagree with. Some some good signs on defense. Yeah, for sure. Uh, special teams. I mixed thought bag. that. Yeah, definitely a mixed bag. Um, Jake Elliott, those three field goals were huge. Four. I mean, yes, four. Um, yeah. But the the long ones in particular, yeah, two fifty yarders. Uh, it, difference in the, of this game was Jake Elliott. <laughs> how many how many fifty yarders do I have? I'm. <laughs> you know that Alex is going to cut that up, make a whole like sequence of all the times you're trying to turn the light back on. <sighs> so we did our predictions, um, before the season. I think I said. What did I say, eight 50-yarders? Yeah, you're off to a good start. He's got two. The ones I'm really fascinated by, because we know he can hit a 50, a 51, he makes 56-yarders like they're layups. 
He's now five for six in his career from 56 yards and out. That's crazy. It's the highest in NFL history by a guy who's attempted at least five of them. And, you know, there's only six guys who got more from 56 and out. And, I mean, the one he hit today was like, I mean, it, it had room to spare. He crushed it. I don't know if he's got – did you have a chance to talk to him? Uh, he went to the podium, so no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did run a, a minute of that. I just wonder if he's got a stronger leg, if he if he did something to – he's just a machine. I mean, he's always had a strong leg. It's just uh, a kicked, weapon to have that guy. A 61-yarder. And we talked about this. Like, I think there's a time to go for it from, like, you know, from the 37 to 38. But I think the one he kicked, it was like fourth and 17. And – I don't think it was a good day to be aggressive the way the offense looked. That's why I didn't like that fourth down and two because they had all the momentum. The offense looked awful. I just I, – I, and this isn't second guessing because I was screaming about it in the in the studio. But, um, yeah, Elliott's such a weapon. I think I – think, because if you miss a if you miss a 56-yarder, the other team's getting the ball almost at midfield. Mm -hmm. So the coach has to have incredible trust and, and, and faith that the guy's going to hit it. And um, he does. He's – he was a he's the MVP of the game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. Uh, I think there's a, I, I haven't followed the rest of the games today, but I think there's a chance he's the NFC Special Ooh. Teams Player of the Week. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, it's funny when you you're at a game. Like, I don't know what happened in the NFL today other than uh, this game, but I, I would think he's got a good shot at it. Yeah, I would I would think so as well. And you know, the, he scored all their points after the first quarter. Uh, they they needed every one of them. Britton Covey had a, a nice punt return, twenty five yeah. yards. My Twitter still wants to cut him though. Oh Hope yeah, Covey, he sucks. <laughs> Nobody looks at the numbers or the stats. He's pretty good at it. Yeah, uh, there's a reason he's still that guy, uh, even though they they released him and got into the practice squad. And, and I think Sipos is always like that's a little more up in the air week to week. But uh, I think they like Covey in that role. Yeah, and and why not? You're not going to find someone better. I thought Sipos had a, had a decent day. Mm -hmm. um, there was the one weird one where he like didn't get the the punt off clean, and they got a penalty. Yeah, uh, got a man downfield, but he ended up booming some of them. I mean, he had a long of 54. He averaged 49.3, and his net was 44, and that's huge because mm -hmm. that's really been the problem with him. You know, the returnable punts. Um, Jones had the one. What's his name? Marcus Jones, I think. Uh, their returner. It says M. Jones. I know it wasn't Mac, um, but uh, I think it's Marcus Jones had had a twenty-one yarder. It was, it was more kind of a coverage breakdown. Um, on the on the subject of special teams, Montgomery had that long kickoff return. Um, yeah, that was the the bad of spot. It wasn't all good. No. There was the play where Suo just wasn't on the field. They had yeah. ten men. They had to burn a timeout on special teams. That that shouldn't happen. Right. Yeah, so, um, but there there were some good gunner play. Um, Sydney uh, Sydney Brown had the one, and then he Josh, almost did it. He almost I was making. It. I was just making sure. Uh, <laughs> and then Josh Job had another. And then, by the way, Fletcher Cox. I don't know if, if this was on TV. Josh Job got up after that hit and was about to start jawing with the yes. guy, and Fletcher got right in front of him to make yeah. sure they didn't get a penalty. Saw that pushed him out of the way. That was yeah. uh, that was heads up. That's leadership right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Fletcher. You know, Fletcher, it, it, it took him a little while to really embrace it, but he is such a big part of this leadership group now. Yeah. No, I think that's a good point. I don't think it's something that – I don't want to say it didn't come naturally to him because that's that sounds negative. I just think it's a role – like there are always other guys. Like he was mm -hmm. always kind of – you know, Malcolm was there and Rodney, and he was just a quiet guy. He's just quiet by nature. He's just a quiet guy. Um, but I think that's a really good point. I think he's really embraced it over the last couple of years and has gotten really good at it. Yeah, and uh, in, in his position room, like, those guys look at oh, him with, yeah. you know, like, they, they love that guy, and, and they, they do anything he says. He's revered. It, it kind of reminds you – I'm not comparing him to Reggie White, but it kind of reminds you of the, you know, the respect that you saw from the younger guys when, when Reggie was playing. I mean, um, Fletcher's not, not Reggie, but – Six Pro Bowls. I mean, they look at that and they look at his body of work in 12 years. And not just that, but the way he plays the game, like you alluded to, he never misses a game, never misses a snap. Uh, he, he's just – I can't imagine what it's like being a 
22, 23 year old. I mean, Jordan Davis is, is 23. Uh, Jalen Carter's 22. You come in and there's like this, this God in your room. I mean, it, it's, it's incredible. And they're so lucky that he's embraced this role and given up everything of himself uh, to, to those two young kids and Milton and, and, and all of them, whoever it is. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Anything else you have here? Short week. Yeah, not a lot of time to, to dwell on this one. <laughs> dwell on it. They won the game. They're yeah. one and oh. Sometimes you got to remind yourself they won. It didn't feel like a win, but uh, when, you know, I think when you can, and I give them a lot of credit for, uh, you know, when when you when you've blown because they had no momentum going into halftime, mm-hmm. they just I had to look at the score, but it seemed like they were losing. They were up sixteen fourteen, but um, they look they didn't come out and dominate the second half, but they played well enough. Um, it had to be tough giving up fourteen points in a row, and all of a sudden. Uh, you know, you're you're looking at the scoreboard, and it's a one possession game. Then you're turning it over. They played. I thought they played with a lot of um, a lot of energy. A lot of they didn't play well, but they played with a lot of energy and a lot of spirit. And um, they stayed up when it would have been easy to kind of get down and feel sorry for yourself. And oh, I can't believe this is happening. They didn't let that happen, and um, that's huge because if if they did, they lose this game. Yeah, and we especially saw that after the Jalen fumble. I mean. It's a tough spot for the defense to just have to be right back on the field and try to stop them, but they did it, and that's that's as big a part of complimentary football as when everything is going well. Yeah, I mean they they got the ball down to what the seventeen. That's that's when Fletch made two huge plays in a row. Um, I think he had a stop on Zeke, and then uh, and then that pressure with uh, with with Raddick. So um, yeah, it was uh, they did what they had to do. Um, on both sides of the ball, and um, Vikings, <laughs> Eagles are seven seven point favorites. Dave Thursday night. Um, what? I guess they're seven point favorites. That's the early line. Really, which really surprised me. Vikings uh, lost to the Bucks at home. Who? Um, seven points is a lot. Yeah, uh, maybe that'll come down. Kirk Cousins had a you know. Through for a mile, but uh, but lost. How'd they lose that game? I didn't see. This is like what I mean. I, I don't get to watch yeah. the other games. Uh, Baker Mayfield played well. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like. I I didn't. All I know is that. Um, did you see that Miami um, two or through for four sixty six? Oh, really? And um, Tyreek Hill had two hundred had eleven for two fifteen. <laughs> wow. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, so that was a th- uh, they they won that game thirty six thirty four. So, yeah, uh, interesting day one. You know, you just always see weird stuff happening in week one. You just try to survive, and they did that, and you give them credit for that. Yeah, absolutely. Should we wrap this up? Let's wrap it up. All right. Safe if travels you- home, Dave. Thanks. Yeah, if you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, click the like button, subscribe there as well. Rube, for some reason, I booked a 6 a.m. flight home. It's uh, boarding now. And I We're don't know right why. Now boarding I'm at not, 8 C6. I'm not going to get any sleep, uh, but that's okay. It's going to be a short week. Uh, we'll be back with you guys on Tuesday uh, for a pod, and then uh, no like second pod this week because they play Thursday. Well, we'll it'll be play. second pod thir- a week from – yeah, it'll be Thursday yeah. night. We always have a Thursday one. It'll just be a game day pod. Be a little later, probably Friday morning by the time. Middle of the night, pod. We love it. We get to that. All right. That's it Uh, for Rube. I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye brought to you by Nissan. We will talk to you soon.